They'll be calling you a radical. Before I put this lecture online, that I've done this lecture before in the classroom, I had a discussion with a professor today, and I'm like, look. He says, you know, I can remember when you first started, when you came home from Wall Street, you were teaching with Kyle Madsen, and that first day that Kyle had said you were going to give a lecture, he says, I can remember the crowds. You had to move it outside. And the reason I looked at him, and I said, you know what? crowd showed up so dramatically because they had watched me and it had been well documented through that school business my rise from no money to a millionaire you know with small money in the derivatives market it was a lecture on the derivatives market it was purely there wanting to make money and he's like oh no oh no your lectures were so much more than that and I says yeah I still love giving those lectures because people really did used to line up but I told him, I says, you guys are so behind the curve, so behind, academia is so behind the curve, literature is so behind the curve, so backwards, as the post-ignorant generation, they know, they know, they know. As, yeah, they're watching the wrong subject matter, probably, yes. And before I go on this lecture of mine, I want to first identify this. And the reason I'm putting this, this is something that a whistleblower sent me, that I've had the whole time. This is more proof and proof of Sanjay Gupta and CNN purely passive-aggressive mouse. This is proof, proof, not of, as I've termed, black and yellow journalism. This is proof. This is proof. This is the transcript to his March 26 medical show at incredible credibility right at Fukushima, right after he got home. I'm going to read a line out of this. I posted this to my website. Blanche Schwartz, I'll post the page link. Scroll down through the videos, the bottom of the entire link's there. Gupta, now even I just returned from Japan, as you know, and there's a lot of misinformation out there, and understandable, a lot of anxiety. Do people over there, he's speaking of Chernobyl, because they live this, do they, do they understand how bad it was, or maybe how bad it wasn't in the long run? Weber, by the way, name Weber, this punk piece of shit, if I ever get a crack at this punk, I will knock his punk ass out. This creep, I live in Weber County, named after John Weber. I wonder if he's related. John Weber is spitting this fucking, called himself an artist, but what a creep. And for freaking CNN to put this loser piece of, he put up photos, claims he was over there fishing at Chernobyl, we know. And Gupta, this is malice, this is malice, and I'm going to sue CNN. I am going to sue them. Weber, if you're walking down the street, you just said Chernobyl to someone, they're going to shake. And it's that's certainly very true in the Ukraine. I would tell my Ukrainian friends, I'm going up to Chernobyl, in fact, my first visit time. It took me about four hours to finally get a driver that was willing to go up there. Everybody else said, you know you're crazy, you're going to die. You're going to get cancer. I'm not going up there. So I think there are still a lot of misconceptions. I don't believe he ever went up there. I believe he's a liar. And this goes into the whole detail of Gupta putting this punk up. At the end, he, this is right when I reported Fukushima was pouring plutonium into the Pacific, and now it's being widely reported. Finally, 600 days later, put up a picture of putting two people fishing. This is purely, this was taken down. This was sent to me by three different people. One, a viewer here had it. A whistleblower from CNN actually sent me. It has verified the conspiratorial nature to this. I'll post the whole thing. I want you guys to read it. I'll highlight these sections out of it. This is the transcript that was taken down from CNN's March 26, 2011, as Gupta got home. This is pure passive graphics, hairsprayed malice. I want to talk about the post-ignorant generation, who they are, what they are, and why this is. As I've been watching Oliver Stone's documentary. I went in there with a lot of misconceptions. Well, not misconceptions. We all have our mind about Oliver Stone. Platoon turned us all on, which is so brilliant, so brilliant, so brilliant. As my father, I've been ranting and raved, as you guys know, was a draft and marine, marching in the Nevada test site, human guinea pig, and I would tell this story to people for years, and they would look at me like I had three eyeballs. I'm crazy. We all know that it's contemporized fact now via some of my lawsuits against Jess Perma. Whatever. I went in there, I have to say, it's brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. 
I turned off the other zone when he made Woody Hellison and Natural Born King. I'm like, why did you even put that piece of trash out there? His, I, I know, I, wow, it's all I got. As he said in his interview with Solon O'Brien, which is the only CNN person I will even listen to. I will listen to her interviews. I like her. I think she, I hate CNN. With a passion, Andrew from Vanderbilt and Gupta and these 1% creepy pricks. In his interview to her, he says, the untold history is maybe not the right name because the history, well, at which it absolutely is told. It's like Jesse Ventura goes on to CNN and says, you know, you know, Larry, you know, Larry, when they killed Lincoln, it was a conspiracy. They tried to kill the Secretary of State. I'm like, really? You just woke up? What, did you skip the fifth grade? As Oliver Stone says it. It was reported. Nobody is, because no one bothers to read it. No one gives a damn about history because we've become this contemporary 10-second soundbite, ridiculous, ingrained, dogmatic, ridiculous generation. We are the horrible, horrible generation. As this is, we are standing at the crossroads. We are literally standing at the crossroads. As I wrote this two years ago, my post ignorance, which my post ignorance is so much more. It is a socioeconomic movement. It is real, it is real, it is real. As the ignorant generation, the baby boomer generation, the equable, are the most ignorant people in human history. It is undebatable. It is the fact that they have repressed the, as I term the post, ignorant generation. As they have been repressed into, sweet are the uses of adversity. Sweet are the uses of, as the byproduct, as the greatest generation, as Brokaw termed that, which this is where I do disagree with. Oliver Stone. He talks about the arrogance of that, which is true, which is true. Those guys came over. I was raised by a D-Day Omaha Beach veteran, and these guys, they were the most arrogant people in the world to the Nam guys, to the Korean War guys. It's That part is true. But they were the greatest generation because they were starving to death. People were starving to death in 1929. People forget this. As I put up video, as that Hoover and Bush's speech could be played side by side. It was the same at time. What's the difference between 29 and now? What's the difference? Very little. I'll tell you the difference. In 1929, when it happened, Hoover was still president for another couple years, for the blame was put on the person that rightly was to blame. It was the exact same philosophy as the Bush administration. Exact same. But when it happened in 2008, finally capitulated out, a black man had become president. So it was hyperbole for the AstroTurf movement to take root, to take root. And blame it on him, it was nothing but a two-year head fake. As it is changing right now, as Holder will go down in history, as the worst attorney general, the pacifist pussy with no teeth attorney general in world history. As the country was begging for Rove to be indicted. As Rove needs to be indicted, indict him now. Let's talk about that real quick before I go off on some of these readings. Let's talk about Brandy, Bradley Manning. We know where he's at, what he's doing. This is the guy that, I'm not saying what he did was legal or right. I never said that. I'm talking about where he's at. Where, but let's talk about the guy who committed all the mass, mass murder. Karl Rove. Karl Rove. And the guy who reported and exposed the guy that was putting on the mass murder. Now, why is this going on and on and on and on? Because the passive left in this country for 40 years. When are you going to realize the environmental movement, the passive left, is a failure? It is a total 40 year failure. A massive fucking failure because of its passive approach. It has what? I watched the 70th anniversary in Chicago, and I watched these professors get up there and grant. I forced myself to watch it. And I'll tell you what, if Michael Jackson would have known this before he got addicted to pro laws, I was in the hospital giving every drug known to man. I could tell you, boy, did Michael Jackson have taste in drugs, because pro oh my God. Whoo! Well, that knock is, they would use it on me when I got so much pain to knock me out. They would hook a respirator and bring me out. He didn't need pro -Vol. I watched, and I was not tired. I drank coffee and I was wide awake. I watched the speeches from Chicago on the 70th anniversary, and these doctors get up there, and the subject matter, the thing that's lacking, they have no passion, it's pathetic. I watched and I was not tired. I've passed out in such a deep sleep on my keyboard, with such sleep, a slobber coming out all over my keyboard. I not old slow, I don't ever recall going to sleep that hard, ever, ever. It was better than any sedative in history, in history. I woke up, slobber all over my keyboard, whatever, you know, and I'm like, 
It was pathetic. It was When are you fuckers going to wake up and realize what is lacking in the environmental movement? Passion, passion, passion. As I say over and over in my lectures, and I've said for years, cultural conversations are dangerous, passion, intelligent arguments get results, and if you went to the Lincoln movie and Spielberg's beautiful movie, which is powerhouse, it is magnificent, if you watch it, there is that answer right there. Passion, intelligent, keyword, intelligent, arguments get results. Cordial conversations are dangerous. They get nowhere. And tell the left fucking, as you hypocrites, you hypocrites, you hypocrites, as all you are doing is I've been accused of being too Freudian. I take that as a compliment. As all the, the 60s movement and all that movement was, was you fucking man chasing these beautiful girls with the flowers in their hair. These girls. All you was doing was chasing them. I want to show you something. This is one of the book series of books I teach at it. When was that painting done? How many hundreds of years ago? The Horizon series. Those books of the 1970s are brilliant, by the way. I teach out of those. This is another book that I teach out of, an old book, American Civilization. There. The art and the literature of the 1970s was an absolute incredible powerhouse. A powerhouse. It gets no credit. The art moment of Warhol identifying Edie as she said so elegantly and so beautifully, it is the culture. That art movement in the 70s, which gets no credit, powerful. As we have the non, as I attended a show, and I'll tell you how I know that this is working. The post ignorant generation has woke up, and it's a, because there is a byproduct. There's a byproduct to the Karl Rove evil, mass, murder, lies, lies. Repress your youth, repress your youth. I mean, the things that we did when we were 18, 17, 16, 23, 24, the youth go to prison for now, as we all did them. We have repressed them into, there is a byproduct, a cultural byproduct, as there was in 29, as in 1932. FDR was elected, and the breath of the country was so outrageous as the New Deal happened. Why did not the New Deal happen? As people were starving to death in the street. Literally hundreds of thousands of people starved to death. That is a fact. It is a fact. The New Deal happened because of that. Why didn't it happen this time? Because a black man become president when it was happening. It's easy to blame him as the astroturf went to work. It was a two-year head fake. And soup lines. Can you imagine if 65 million people right now who are on food stamps, out of necessity, were standing in lines in food stamps? There is your difference. That is your only fucking difference. Is suicide is off the hook in people of my generation. White, freaking males, white, uh, Africans, Mexicans, uh, whatever race, as their businesses have failed, if they're killing themselves, they're popping pills and going to sleep as this fucking 1% fucking evil goop to piece of shit as his fucking movement. As my post ignorance, I went to an art show and I, I've been so uninspired for 40 years that I, I, from the school that I graduated with my fine art degrees, I, years and years ago, fine art and finance together. I'm still the only degree in the history of that university with that double major. I've been so uninspired by the art in this country in 40 years. It's, you want to talk about, if you walk out and bought a piece of art in the last 30, 40 years, you want to tell you, it's, I know your honest feeling is you got home and your buyer's remorse, it was worse than when you bought that new car. Because that piece of art depreciated more when you drove than that car you drove off the lot. And we all know what that is. As I've seen some art the last two, three years that, oh, wow. I had a conversation with a young female yesterday. It's incredible canvas she had lit on fire and burnt. I had a long talk with her. And I says, this thing oozes metaphorical, gigantic. And, you know, and I talked about who, what, when she, she had no idea clue, but that's when it hit me. It doesn't matter that she knows. This is pouring out of her subconscious. As my alchemy rants, I go on. That's it. That's poached ignorance. That is the byproduct that is built into these people's subconscious. The art is pouring out. The art is starting to pour out. The countercultural movement as Occupy was real. It was not, it was real and that was the sex, not angry sex in a crack house. It was born of love and that child has been born. Oh, I've seen some magnificent art the last freaking year out of these young people. I went to a show yesterday I was like, oh my God, wow. 
Wow, I want to read this. The reality, this is about your creepy... Prosecute! Indict Rome now! He, I mean, did he murder Connell? I think Connell committed suicide. He was getting ready to talk. As we know factually that Rove stole Ohio. In fact, I've been telling this people for years, people won't listen to me as Reed Unger's great, incredible, brilliant book. It is as powerful as Fahrenheit 9-11, which, by the way, every single thing in Fahrenheit 11 is so accurate, it's incredible. As Unger's book is so accurate. The greatest treasonous criminal in the history of this country is Karl Rove. And as long as we fail to prosecute him, and we won't do nothing as a guy who reports his mass murder, think about the mass murder he's named. Here it is. I wrote this in my book, Post Dick in 2010. The reality of all this is plain. Ignorance and hate is bred by two. The male provides the hate. Rogue, Bremer, Wolf, Red, Cheney. The female allows the male to breed her via ignorance and passive arguments. The American popular opinion. The pregnancy is an unwanted child. Where the mother who's overweight, high and drunk every day, all through the pregnancy. The belief in a yellow ribbon. The lazy, poorly educated geographical argument. And the racist view of Asians, 1946 to 1971, that turned into the racist view of Middle Easterners. The Pure, lazy mother and aggressive, ignorant father have created the new, even more ignorant child, the American popular opinion. Born not from love, born from angry sex in a crack house. The child has been born. It has a small brain and is addicted to anything it looks at. It is obese, it is lazy, and it knows no other way. The child is ours. Now the parents refuse to raise it. $35 trillion war. Lower taxes, lower taxes, lower taxes. There is no orphanage to send the little creep to. So we pass it around till one day American Bobby and Fanny sees its face and recognizes that it is the child they abandoned so long ago. They embrace the child and take the child in. And then the child, in an angle of rage, kills the parents. Us. American popular opinion in our sleep. I wrote that 10, 10, 10 as I was admitted into the hospital 11, 11, 11. I had an argument with a person today about 12, 12, 12. Huh, zombie apocalypse? Well, are you freaks that pathetic? It really is a metaphor. As Fukushima has been pointing to the Pacific for 600 days, Sanjay Gupta and his malice. But you're not afraid of that, but you create some, you fall for some created astroturf that has done nothing more than to sell guns. That's all that is. And they fall for it. Oh, have they done a number on the American popular opinion. As a member, but the young people are awakening through social media, through these YouTube sites. Look, this genre of YouTube, as Google is finally waking up. Google is finally waking up. They've been coming to me finally. And they're like, they've woke up. I've said for years, look, you have a YouTube video that people click on because it's got some sexual contextual name. And they click onto it, and you're forced to watch an advertise through an AdSense account, and then you click right out of it. They've come to me, and they said, Kevin, you have one of the highest retention rates of any YouTube out there. We want to work with you. They may come to me, and I says, I don't want advertising streaming across the face. You're going to have to come up a different way with me, because I think academia is so behind the curve. Literature is so behind the curve with this genre. This isn't to watch a chicken fuck a squirrel. Or some little kids fucking fall asleep in the back. Oh, no. This is a powerhouse genre that doctors are using. As I found a YouTube video on the misdiagnosis of my own cancer and saved my own life because of that YouTube video. This is post-ignorance. That is the definition of post-ignorance. As this young generation is starting to get it. I have conversation after conversation after conversation. Because you forced them there near their base. And they're techies. And one thing. we have that this, this movement has Anonymous on its side. Anonymous is a powerhouse. He is a powerhouse. As, when I get back to Rove, that, that is a true, as Tom Hartman has reported so beautifully, Tom Hartman gets it. He's the only guy out there that gets it. Tariffs are the answer. As Steve Chinese Jobs, I think it is so powerhouse yesterday that Apple introduced products made back. As the only thing not coming back is us, us baby boomers, as Steve Chinese Jobs is not coming back. They're making products here. It is more to come, more to come, and tariffs are going to happen. They're going to happen, and I hope we get an attorney general that will indict Rove. He's the biggest criminal, treasonous criminal, until you stop this, and because of this post-ignorance movement, and tell, how can we be a democracy whatsoever? How can we, as so many people have bled and died for this great country, including my Marine father? How can we be anything that we have stand and fought for for you? How can we be a society of any kind of people? We can. How we have turned into this lying, hairsprayed, masquerading, mass murdering murders, the military fake 
Christian military radical and industrialized complex. It is a lie, it is a lie, it is a lie. Until you indict people, Obama, and your new Justice Department says, I can't believe you voted for Obama, he's pro-nuclear. How can I vote for that apparatus that would have placed Rove and Bremer and Wolfowitz and these tyrant mass murders as they did not win? He did not win as I reported in this book. I've been saying over and over and over. Finally, it's being reported widely that they were counting. He did not win. He did not win. He stole it. Rove stole it. Rove tried to. St he did steal it in 2000. That's a fact. It came down to Ohio. Rove stole it. Connell commit they committed suicide. He was getting ready. He was subpoenaed. He was going to squeal. He was going to talk. Valerie Plain Wilson and her husband say it perfectly. Pert walk, frog walk, this punk motherfucker. As this is post ignorance. And we have thrown this into this young generation. We have repressed. We were handed equity on a silver platter by our parents. Look what we did with it. You fake, phony fuckers. As this is, sweetheart, the uses of adversity. I see post-ignorance as a pure art, my friend, in the concept of art itself, in the concept of art as culture, in the concept that people are a culture, in the concept that inspiration and influence are great historical artists like Van Gogh and Millet, like Pollock's reference to Kinsinzi, like Monet's to the sunlight morning, dawn, fall, spring, summer spring. It is influenced by the involvement of the time. I look at the culture and the art thereof today. Economic theory, popular culture, art, more reality, lack thereof art, the mind of seeing when others for some cognitive reason do not see. Everyone saw life from millenniums. Everyone saw a simple life from millenniums. Everyone saw a collected color from millenniums. It is more per se than the artist. Monet saw the light. Millet saw the struggle. Van Gogh saw the line. Smithson saw the simplicity of the line, the shape against the landscape. Kaninsky saw the election of color and shape. Pollock saw the color of dynamics in motion. But much more than that, they saw decades ahead of the truth. Their minds saw fact and truth. Their minds saw st were strong enough to act upon when they understood, when others did not understand. Not yet. They had strong facts and knew how to work. They were the purification of ambition, intelligent, educated, smooth with worth thinking. Yeah, I visualize and have for over two decades, you know, my, via my hawk and trowel, via my keyboard, via my paintbrush, via my cardboard three thirds throwaway camera, via my flip video camera, via my soapbox, YouTube, and my websites is this. Poetic injustice to the entire world. Wars without provocation. Pain without a crime. Love without an artistic spirit. Ignorance with a club, a big club. As a counter, what I have termed neo-ignorance is post-ignorance. I see post-ignorance like this. As a movement in pure intellectualism. In a broad intellectualism. Not I know art history. Not I know how to draw like a camera. Not I know how to interpret A. Not I know how to incorporate. But I know culture. I know environments. I know in the more exposed manner. I know economics. I know geopolitics. I know metaphors good and bad. I know struggle and what it feels like to be stolen in wealth and mind. Artistic and benevolent. That's what this is, and it's happening right now. And it is happening right now, as this movement is real. It is real, and it is going to take this. It is cultural. Look, the baby boomer, the echo boomer, are the ignorantest people in the history of man. I proved it. I proved it in my studies. Many people, it's not a document. It's not a commentary. It's a documentary. We have seen studies coming out now that one people are proven that they're in dog groom postured dogmatic rhetoric is proving wrong, proven in their face, they will even believe their wrong rhetoric even more. Why? Because it is generational. Because it is tribal. Because these people have used, including Rove, they have used such a propaganda machine as Rupert's propaganda machine will go down in history as the greatest propaganda machine in world history. They know deep down in their soul, as these are grown men in hairspray. They know this young generation and the information age is a powerful, powerful genre. So I got an argument with a professor today. She's like, well, these kids are only going into these Wikipedias for 13 seconds. No. That is the baby boomer that's going in for them. And we have proved that. We have proved that data's out there. The young generation is going in much longer. And when I speak of people, as I like to step back like Malay and view from the broader perspective, I speak in the aggregate. And people need to understand that. I am not here. These videos, as I part of my movement, my poster movement, the comments mean a lot to me. But I am not a message board. I am not here to false equivalency. I'm not here as people think. Look, my videos or anybody's videos are, to, are personal property of mine. That when you publish that, they are no different than literature. They are no different. They are mine. They belong to me. They are mine. They are a book. They are a literature. They allow to comment whatever. I love your comments. They're such a big and 
the intellectuals out there, as I know the vasses are ignorant as they get, but I'm speaking in the broad context. I'm speaking in the aggregate. I know there are plenty of beautiful artists. And as an artist in Americana, I'm an artist in the world. As I have been an artist my whole life, if you've been an artist from the mid-70s as I have, till present, we're the more repressed, starved out people in the history of art. Not only have we been smashed down with our ideas and our beautiful art, we've been looked down on, we've been laughed at at the way we dress, the way we think, the way everything. Our art has been obliterated and has been stolen by corporate bullshit art as, well, I won't even get into that because I don't want to offend him. We have lived as an artist. Talk about the starving artist. As the young starving artist, we've been the starving artist in our entire lives. We have been smashed now. We have been laughed at. We've been giving nothing. That's why there is no great art. Because I told a young person today, she got all frustrated. And I've been all frustrated. She says, this professor rejected this, that. She didn't even understand my many. I says, that is a compliment, young lady. For your art, it's like YouTube video or art, whatever. If you're getting a whole bunch of views or people love your literature, right, or you're selling tons and tons of books, you are a failure. To be rejected right now is a compliment. These fucking ignorant masses wouldn't know a Picasso would smash them in their face. It is much worse than Melville's fucking pain. As Melville's beautiful, the greatest novel ever written. I think it's undebatable. In Americana. Nobody read it for 60 years. They thought it was trash. He died. Even he sold some. Even he sold some. He had some money. The artist of this time has no money. They're the starving artist from day one. And they have smashed us philosophically. They have smashed us socially, but they have really buried us economically in every dirty trick they could ever find because they are art haters, because they, are art, they have no cerebral cortex, because they are passive aggressive car rolls, cheaters in life. They are the greatest criminals in world history. And until we incarcerate, prosecute, and what is Martin Luther King's incredible, incredible quote? Until that art bends that way, and we really do this, and we take guys who are writing mortgages on the back end and put them in jail. And we take Carl Rowe and we put him in prison for life as he's committed treason, treason, treason because of the theft. I mean, how many people? As human resources is all that counts. Human resources is, is when I people used to flock to my lectures, Kyle Matheson died of a lung cancer. They asked me, Kevin, you want to come back and teach here? And I says, fuck no, I will never teach here. As you disrespected knowledge, you disrespected the great Kai Cooley. As we were the number one school of business in the United States. The number one undergraduate is when he taught there, when I taught there, when I graduated from there, my graduating class. As we were the number one, as you disrespected on his madness, murder, as he died of freaking cancer like that at Young. As Kyle Madsen got lung cancer, a non-smoker, and dropped dead, you did nothing for them. You disrespected their knowledge. You disrespected art. You disrespected logic and turned it into hairspray. Fuck you. Now his wife. What is statistical probability? Neither one is smoker. She has the exact, this beautiful, incredible person who is a surgical nurse, a powerful surgeon, who has saved millions of people's lives. Is my brilliant uncle, the heart surgeon who started logging clinic, one of the greatest heart surgeons in American history started the tide of heart disease. When we lose people like that, that is our society. And when we smash down logic and knowledge, we are killing ourselves as a people. And we have killed ourselves. We are living in it. It is a horrible fucking nightmare. That is the loss. When Iraq happened, I will never forget. This beautiful African-American, freaking 40-something-year-old soldier, big, strong, stout-looking, incredible man. As on PBS, as they tried to kill PBS, they had him on there as they would put those pictures and go into his narrative of his life. They talked about this guy. Number two in his graduating class at West Point. Powerhouse. Taken. When we lose people like that, because of lies, that is the death of society. That is the horrible, smashing death of a society because the human resource is what counts, not the natural. The exploitation of a natural resource is done by creeps, as we know that. They're robber barons. As Karl Rove and the oil exploiters to make that are robber barons, and they use Freudian agenda through an Orwellian. Orwell himself would look at freaking Rupert and go, oh my God. But there is a new generation. The byproduct has come out of this smash down. Evil, lies, hairspray and grown men, murder, and you hypocrites, and you phony fake fucking man who couldn't get laid in a fucking horse house with a fucking handful of fucking stack of honors that big. You creeps have had to fucking try to fucking...